Yeah, I was born in Topeka, Kansas. I am the youngest of six children. In other words, my, my brothers and sisters say I'm the baby. Uh, and uh, I grew up in Portland, Oregon, with uh, my parents. We came to Oregon uh, during the, the shipyards. Uh, and, my, uh, and we were actually uh, following the, the shipyards uh, during that period of time. We were in the Vanport Flood. I don't know how many people know that Vanport was the second largest city in the state of Oregon at that time, and the flood occurred in 1948. So I'm one of those evacuees uh, who survived uh, uh, the flood. We had these marble shooting contests, and marbles, shooting marbles was really um, a thing of skill and, and accuracy, and, and I became quite, uh, quite skillful and you've got that little silver one that becomes a prize. So yes, I uh, uh, had my little treasure chest of, of marbles. My, my dad talked uh, a lot about uh, uh, elections uh, uh, when we were kids and of course you, you when you're a kid I don't think you're paying as, many, as much attention to it as, as you get older and what have you. And, and my dad talked a lot also about uh, uh, particularly one politician and his name was Charlie Curtis. Uh, and Charlie Curtis was vice president. He was a Republican, and he was vice president under Hoover. Well, he was also a neighbor to my great-grandmother, and so I heard a lot about that. I heard a lot about the importance of voting. I heard a lot about, you know, uh, how you research to, uh, in candidates to, before you cast your vote and all that. So I think my father was very, very, very instrumental. I came on board in 69. That was the, the years of the State Economic Opportunity Office. It was the years that we actually did the work to start the Department of Human Services. It was the years that we actually took and brought all of these agencies together, you know, that, that during that period of time. So it was the years of we're working with the local communities because the governor also had started, you know, uh, regional government organizations. So all of those were in play during that period of time in history. When you're young and you're excited about change and you're excited about what you're doing, I said, I don't think I can imagine that we knew Kant was in our vocabulary. I want you to think about that. So, and if you know Governor Call, there was a risk all the time. Governor Tia, in tapping me for a new post, he also did, I, that was the ombudsman uh, position, and my husband, Ted, was the ombudsman for Governor McCall. I believe that we're the only couple that are, both have occupied the same position in the office for a governor. Uh, and so, yes, the governor uh, uh, tapped me for that uh, position, and that was very, very exciting because you're actually, you're actually looking at trends of problems that exist within an agency, uh, and, and, and because you were an extension of the governor, the agencies more than not will sit down and try to work out some solutions uh, to it. And so you're the representative between the governor and the citizenry. We were getting all these letters coming in because the choices will become between buying med your pills or buying food. And when I received those, I went to the governor and I said, Governor, if we wait until the federal government changes that rule that they made, our citizens, our seniors will die. They'll starve to death. So we have to do something now. We have to dramatize the issue, uh, and so the, so the Washington, D.C. knows how serious this it really is, and then we have to feed. So that's how Oregon Food Chair was born. I was at a Rotary meeting, and uh, two of my friends, uh, after the meeting, they said, you know what, Jackie, we think you ought to get back into politics. My father was always said, says, you can't complain about things. You've got to get up off the couch and do something about it. So I wasn't going to complain anymore, so I got up off the couch and ran. I enjoy, you know, actually meeting with the community and uh, enjoy interacting and listening to the community. So that was kind of like right up my alley, but I really did uh, do a lot of shoe leather a lot of knocking on doors and a lot of listening. I still advise others who, when they're going to campaign, that you need to do that. 
it's not it's not the canned stuff. It's the engaging with the members of your community and interacting with them that wins elections and that counts. And so we came within about three percentage points. I lost the first that campaign to him, and I thought, hmm, if I did that good, by golly, I'm going to do it again. So we did. We did it the second time, and we won. I found myself, because it was following term limits, I found myself with having had the executive experience, having known how to do budgets and what have you, I have been on Ways and Means pretty much ever since my entire career. That is, that was not usual in, in that, that, those days in, in history. I became one of the senior members right away. And I think here again it is because of I had the executive, you know, I, I came from the executive branch. Uh, and so, you know, dealing with legislative fiscal officer and legislative administration and DAS and all that was not foreign to me. You know, knowing processes wasn't foreign to me, you know, and so, no, I think it was probably the, the when I said I knew how to find the bathroom, that's what I meant. <laughs> that you, you, you knew your way around. When I came back in the, in, uh, as a policymaker, remember I came from Children's Service Division, and, um, and, and family building blocks, before it was family building blocks, he had relief nurseries. When I started, there were three, I believe there was three relief nurseries, three or four. There's over 30 some now. They have a waiting list. They have a 90 some percent success rate of keeping families together and out of foster care. I mean, so for me, uh, that's one of them that I uh, hold near and dear uh, to the work that was done. And there was a, a commission that was created, uh, a four chairmanship committee, if you can imagine. So there was two from the House and two from the Senate. And so I was, Courtney had, put, had asked me to serve on that committee. And so we came out of that with some policy changes uh, the four of us, uh, two Republicans and two Democrats here, it was bipartisan. Uh, and, and that became the, uh, the platform for justice reinvestment. I had not expected uh, uh, to, uh, to be working on public safety, and, and yet uh, that has evolved with some big payoffs. Uh, one, the recidivism rate in Oregon is, is declining. Uh, two, you're giving, with the reentry uh, program, you're giving meaning to an uh, individual to be able to work and, and, uh, and to have a, a, a positive life rather than a negative life and to become a taxpayer rather than uh, a, a taker. When I was elected uh, by my colleagues to actually be the minority leader and made history, uh, uh, and I did not know that, that Oregon had not had in, in the past, that I was, uh, again, a first. Um, I, I think it's long overdue that I not be, continue to be a first, by the way. Our job is to govern this building. Most people don't think of it that way. But there are things that happen uh, in the, between the chambers that, you know, your job is to make certain that things are done uh, smoothly within within the, uh, the protocols and, and what have you. Uh, and, 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 and at the same time, you're responsible for making certain that whether it's administrative services, whether it's ledge council, whether it's all of those come under the purview, and most of us serve on those committees as well, to make certain things are functioning well for the citizens of the state of Oregon. In New York, I had actually uh, had worked in an office uh, there and, and could, could apply uh, uh, your managerial skills and what have you. So I wanted to do the same when I returned to Oregon. Uh, and so the first thing I did was apply at the business school and I was rejected and denied because of color. We, we hadn't gotten that far yet of that kind of, of eliminating that discrimination. Now the employment, we've got the EEOC laws and what have you. We didn't have those then. You know, we didn't have those laws on the books, you know, and, and we were talking about hiring practices, nor are you talking about educational practices. So, uh, and like I said, the fair housing, which I 
you know, we know this, that Governor Hatfield signed that law, but a lot of work was done, you know, in order to break down those barriers. And we're still breaking down barriers today. Right. And, you know, so my wall is the uh, poll tax receipt of my grandfather. And that's my reminder up there on the wall of how important uh, this engagement and this involvement uh, is. So, you know, for me, whether it is being on the school board, whether it's being on, in, uh, on city house, city councilor, whatever, or water districts or whatever, whatever your, your passion may be, uh, I think we have a responsibility to get engaged and involved. It's kind of interesting because sometimes your journey will take you where you don't even imagine that you're going to go.